Observing the growth in the number of female entrepreneurs, especially young female entrepreneurs, is a great uh, step to female or women uh, empowerment. Experts in the sector see the more women have access to equal opportunities, the more developed the country can be, and the easier it is to reduce any existing inequalities that can slow down the economic growth of a nation. In today's edition of your program, Women and Leadership on Canal the International, we focus on young or female entrepreneurs, what they have been doing, their success stories, and how they can eventually pull others along their path. The program is on Canal the International. Stay tuned. Women Entrepreneur has been recognized during the last decades as an important untapped a source of economic growth for young female entrepreneurs uh, create a new uh, jobs uh, daily for themselves, others and others and buy uh, different solutions or provide uh, different solutions to management in different companies around the world. Today, the world is pulling or uh, putting so much effort towards empowering uh, women in uh, business, you're probably asking questions, what percentage of young uh, female entrepreneurs in our economy uh, today? We certainly have answers to those questions. If you want to watch our past editions on the program Women and Leadership, you can go to our, our YouTube page. You just simply type Canal the International Women and Leadership and you can watch our past editions. We'll write back after the jingle. And let the conversation begin. We are talking about uh, women and leadership. And today we are focusing on uh, young female entrepreneurs. I bet you they started as uh, teenagers and today they're growing to a rate where many are appreciating already. All of them are young. They're four years in the studio. I will start with someone that's very close to me. She's called Nicole Ibot. Nicole, how are you doing today? I'm good, thank you. Is it the first time you're coming to the studio? Uh, not really. I've had... Um a studio interview with CRO TV before. All right. Now, as a young girl, what do you inspire? What what inspires you daily? Um, what inspires me daily? Um, I can say it's poverty. Yeah, <laughs> because I'm from a very poor background, and that's what inspires me to work harder every day. All right. We'll talk about we'll talk about that. We equally have Shikina uh, Penny. She's into uh, beauty. Uh, Beauty and fashion, can I say that way? Shikina, how are you today? I'm fine, and you? I hope you're not shy. <laughs> I'm not shy. And it's the first time you're coming to the studio to talk about your project, talk about you? Yes, it's the first time I'm, I'm there. All right. Now, we equally talk about your own projects. We equally have Ya Yanto Fatima. She's yeah. right here with us. She's uh, into, oh, her name of company, let's just say it, Team Afrik Glamour. Yeah. I can see you're glamouring. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you feel today? I feel good. I know, most especially being a guest at Kanato International on the program Women and Leadership. Now, what did you do that impacted life of other young girls during the youth week? During the youth week, what did I do? I, um, I actually took a few of my nieces, mm -hmm. nieces, you know, charity begins at home mm -hmm. to help do one or two things for me that will be beneficiary to them, to teach them how to work their own money. Okay. Yes. By doing what exactly? Like doing work, like helping me to need when I need to need. All right. Helping me to maybe put a bit how in old, the bit. How old, are, how old are they? Um, you have... 16, 15. All right. Thank you so much. You talk about your own projects. We equally yeah. have uh, Manzo Zumafo. Okay. She's all That's the way right. from Boya in the southwest region of Cameroon. You traveled all the way from Boya to be here. I want to thank you for taking our time to be here today. But how do you feel? Um, I feel great. At the same time, I feel... Um I feel great being on set with you today. Mm -hmm. uh, you look very beautiful. Thank you so much. <laughs> it's an honor and it's a pleasure to be here with other amazing young girls doing mm -hmm. powerful things in their, in their community. So it's an honor to be here and I feel happy to be here. Now I want yeah. to start with uh, Nicole about how old are you? How old are you? I just turned 25 today. You just turned oh. 25. Happy birthday. Thank so you. It's actually uh, your birthday. <laughs> now on your birthday, what's that remarkable thing you want to do? On my birthday? Um, as I always do, 
I I always, you know, so this is something private though. Mm -hmm. So what I always do is, I always, there's this hospital in Limbe. I always, you know, send money for my aunt to help pay uh, hospital bills for people who don't have, because there are some people who owe hospital bills. All right, let, tell us about yourself. Who is Nicole Boot? Okay, um, Nicole Boot is an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. and I'm a serial entrepreneur. If I, if I may say so, because I'm into so many other businesses. Yeah, so I started business. Name the other businesses that you're into. Can oh, you know them? Okay, I'm um, actually into tech. I have a restaurant, a cafe restaurant mm -hmm. around Bonamusadi. And then I, I also. Buy you? Yeah. Yeah, go on. Then I also have um, a hair brand owned by me too. Mm -hmm. Okara Brands, I think um, a lot of people know it is in the market. So we do production of hair in the company and then I also have an agricultural brand mm -hmm. called Green Africa. Now how do you blend all this? How do you manage them? Mm, <laughs> I don't know, I just build systems around everything. Mm -hmm. Like um, even without me some of them work very well. Mm -hmm. I try to build the culture for all my businesses. Like each sector has a particular culture mm -hmm. And so even when I'm not around, everything moves on very well. And I try to manage all of them. I mean, I'm still young. I'm not married. So I have all the time to manage all the businesses. Now, for how long have you been setting up these businesses? And how many people do you employ today? Um, I started business since in 2016. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was still That's very you young. Were, how old were you at back then? I think... I was like 18. Okay. Yeah, that's when I just I just um, graduated from high school. Okay. So I was in Panafric in Boya. It was my first year in the university, and then that's when uh, the crisis started. Okay. Yeah. So there was no school and all of that. So I had to move to Douala, mm -hmm. and I came to Douala. I mean, I had nothing. You came to Douala with nothing. Nothing at all. I actually came here because I wanted to spend some time, and then later on, when the crisis is a bit, um, when it's down a bit, when the tension is a bit down. I can rush back to Boya. But you had a business ideas way back in Boya. I was just doing hairdressing. I was doing mobile hairdressing. Okay. Yes. That's so, moving from home to home? Yes. And then I was also doing, I had my potato and egg business All right. at around um, my 17 and All right. then one at um, Bakri Town. All right. Continue. Yeah. Let's hear your story. Yeah. So um, when I moved to Douala that 2016, 2017, I, I mean, I had nothing. I was coming here just to stay for a while, and then I go back. I move back to Boya, mm -hmm. but I was already doing hair. But I didn't, I didn't want to. I, I felt like I was not born to become just a mere hairdresser, you know. Okay. So I felt like I, I can do more, and that's how I started. I, I, I tried to create hair, like I started creating my own hair style, mm -hmm. and then I traveled to Nigeria one time, and then I had to do my brand. I mean, I'm just giving you like uh, summary. a summary of everything, right? Because my story is a very, very long, long story. story. <laughs> yeah, so that's just how I started. But when I moved to Douala, I used to do hair cosmetics, and I still used to sell Irish and egg around Makepe. Now you do need. You had a spot where you sell, you sell on the spot, or yes. you moved from place to place selling your products? Okay, for that, right? Okay, when I just moved for the first five months, this is what I used to do. I put cosmetics in my bag. I had this big handbag. Mm -hmm. I'll put cosmetics inside, and then I move from office to office to look for clients who don't have good complexion. I'll try to convince them to buy my products. Sometimes I'll walk around with samples and tell them that, look, I have this product that can clear your knuckles, can clear your pimple, and all of that. I you know women like to try stuff, so I usually convince them, and that's how I make sales. And then in the evening, I have these pots around my kepe. Mm -hmm. I'll go there and sell my Irish and egg in the evening. All right, that's, yeah. that's, that's good to hear because a lot of girls out there are just so shy to start mm -hmm. any things like, how can I put things, how do you even go about even convincing people to buy my products? Hope you hear out. You hear your story and you're convinced and you get inspired and what to do. Let's hear your own story. We have Ia Yanton. Yeah. Yes, you are into beauty and fashion, right? And yeah, some sort of with, okay. in the African context. Okay. You know, I stay African, I stay original. Mm -hmm. So whatever I do in the beauty and the fashion, mm -hmm. I use the print. So what do you have on you? Yes, what I have on me, I use the print. Mm -hmm. And this is, this is not an idea that just came up. Mm -hmm. I am this person that has always been um, cultural oriented. Mm -hmm. I've been, 
you know anything on me you must see a bead you must see a fabric a print something that would define me mm -hmm. would define you my have your own identity wherever you go to exactly that African and identity everybody who every knows day. me everybody who has ever come you know it's a description like if the one called okay ah uh, okay um Fatima, yes, the one always with one African something on her. Okay. Yes, that's my identity. So I was passionate. I have always been passionate about these prints. I used to love my mom. You know, she always used to wear the prints so different styles, and it would be so amazing, magnificent to me. I used to ad admire her so much. So I grew up loving it. But I was more of a career-oriented person. Okay. So how old are you? I'm turning 30 this year. Okay. Wow. Yes. So you started at what age? No, this, this business, this whole becoming a business person is a product of Corona. Okay. Because I am, I'm, yeah, I'm a career-oriented person. Okay. Let me just say, I actually went to school, mm -hmm. and um, so it means you stopped schooling just to focus on business. Is that what you're saying? Uh, yeah. Is that what you're telling us? Uh, no, not really, bro. <laughs> before even starting the business, I had, I had my master's degree already. Okay. So before starting the business, mm -hmm. that's why I said um, the whole idea of, you know, start eating money with this okay. your. You know, this is your passion. You, you need to start making money. We don't just be passionate about it, but mm -hmm. try to earn. The whole of it became um, a corona idea. But at the time, we had the lockdown of the house. Right. And I said, okay, I will not just sit down. I lost my job, what I was doing. All right. Okay, yeah. tell us more about the business. What's it all about? The business, it's about um, designing, clothing, every accessory you can ever think of with the African print. Mm -hmm. Be it your outfit, be it, I don't know, um, your throw pillow, it's your personal your mark. Yes. It's your personal mark. Yes. You have people you work with? I or? have people. I have a team. Mm -hmm. I have a team. I have people who do the sewing for me. I have people who, I don't know, who do my errands for me. Mm -hmm. Maybe I work, on more, I work more on my client base. Mm -hmm. I look for my customers. Mm -hmm. And um, I have my team who is always there to support me. All right. We'll talk about funding, <laughs> how you started eventually. <laughs> yeah. Because people are the ones like, how did she begin? How much? Oh. How much profit does she has? Now, how many people does she employ? We're talking about young female entrepreneurs. Yeah. We equally have, I want us to go to Boya. She's from yes. Boya. <laughs> <laughs> now, tell us more about your projects. You're welcome to the town of legendary <laughs> hospitality. That's what we say in Boya. Um, um, the projects I do currently, I'm, I'll speak about what I came here for, which mm -hmm. is the, the fascinator business. Mm -hmm. Because I'll describe myself as a woman who is multifaceted mm -hmm. and, limit, and limitless. Because mm -hmm. um, I'm also into women empowerment through community development projects. Mm -hmm. And I'm currently doing my master's in environmental and occupational health with okay. experience in the, um, both corporate and NGO world. Mm -hmm. Back to what we are here for. Um, so, but this is your main project, um, no, right? I would this not is call it a main project because I do all of them side by side. Okay. Yes. Yeah. But how old are you? I'm 25. You're 25 yes. today. And for oh, how long I'm have you been yeah. pushing this? Um, how long? Um, I started doing the um, craft business in 2016 mm -hmm. when the crisis started and I could not go to school that year. So I was all... You're about 20 by then? Um, or 21? How old was I? No, no, no. no. Probably 19. <laughs> or all right. 19, all right. 19, 18. 18 okay. Yes, I cannot remember exactly, exactly which. So when the, the lockdown happened, I was mm -hmm. home. And I think at the time, we just received the presidential grants, like the, the okay. 50,000. So I took out 6,500 from there. And 6,500 francs grants. from the presidential grants? Yes. And I to start off something? Not, yeah, to start off something. I paid a classmate of mine to do beats. Okay. So I gave him the money, he got me some beads, and I, I learned a few designs. And in the lockdown, I used to teach my neighbors on how to do it or gather them at home. Since they were all home and they were idle, or teach them on the, on the craft making, teach them on leadership, self-esteem, and stuff like that. So okay. it continued like that throughout the year. And people started ordering for, for beads or make beads or make sandals or make slippers, necklaces, fashion bags, and, and sell as well. 
fast forward to 2020, when I was on my first master's program, a classmate of mine used to market or uh, accessories, fascinators. Okay. And I was like, oh, I like this thing. Like, you can never do it. It's very difficult. I'm <laughs> like, okay. I love challenges. So I'm like, okay, after this program, that's the first thing I'm going to hang. I'm going to mm -hmm. settle on the fascinator. So mm -hmm. my sister got married in 2020, and I was like, I'm going to make a fascinator for your wedding. She was like, okay, if you can do it, then that's fine. And I took up the challenge. I went on YouTube, YouTube has been my teacher. I just went okay. and Googled and I learned and I made her a fascinator. It was so beautiful. My mom asked me to make one for her. I made for my auntie and some other people in the family bought for my sister's wedding. So that's those were the first sales I made on fascinator business. And um, fast forward, I think the first 2020, I did not make any major sales, but 2021, people were recommending me, people were calling, and that's how I grew. And I, along the line, I learned to, from other people. I paid to learn some particular designs, but most of the time, it has been um, self-taught. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it means you had focus. You had a project in your mind. You had it in your mind, and when you took it out of your mind, and today you have what we have here today: the fascinators. Fascinator. Now I want to get to Shekina. Shekina, right? Yes, ma'am. How are you? I'm fine. Hope you're not shy. I want to get your voice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not shy. All right. Now, how old are you? I'm 20, um, 21 years old. Oh, you're 21? Yes, please. Okay. <gasps> Tell us more about your project. At 21, you already have your own business of your own. Tell us more about yes. it. I, the business is Tona Fashion, a beauty salon. I'm the co-owner of, of Tona Fashion. Um, what I can say about Tuna Fashion is that we are, speci um, we are specified on manicure, pedicure, face care. Tuna, Tuna Fashion was my 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 young uh, my my sister was the one dealing with it, but she had a problem because she was not really stable. Okay. And she had another work, so she she asked if you I had to step in. Yes. Yeah. But now stepping in, does it involve that you had to put in your own capital to start off with her? No, mm -hmm. just to help to control the mm -hmm. employees, mm -hmm. to control the business. Mm -hmm. Yes, it was not really easy because I was supposed to, I was the one to manage. You were in charge of everything, yes. manage, managing right? yes. from, 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 from the workers yes. to every other thing in the beauty salon, right? You yes, buy sir. every other stuff, you manage even customers yes. are coming mm -hmm. and the rest. Bert, you're a co-owner yes, with your co sister. Yes. Bert, you didn't have a specific capital you injected into the business? Not yet. Not yet. Not but yet. You, 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 you have, you have goals. You, are, yeah. you, are, you have goals towards that, right? You have yes, a sir. specific objective towards having your own, mm -hmm. your own business, right? Am I speaking? You need to speak out. Yes, it's true. Um, <laughs> I have a brand, a, a, a clothes brand. Mm -hmm. The name is called Mukam Takam, mm -hmm. the, the name of the brand. So, Mukantakam. yes, so I want to invest in, in, in the Tona fashion. I want to bring in clothes there. Okay. So, as, yes, so as that um, when people will come, you can also like yes, they can take shop, clothes, shopping. They can seize the opportunity to yes. do their shopping. Okay, yes. that's nice. That's fine. Now let's talk about um, where did you get your inspiration from? Mm, as I said earlier, I got my inspiration from being broke. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, because I was very broke. I, you know, growing up, I I met a lot your of people. Your parents were not giving you money. Nothing. <laughs> We're very broke. I mean, if they manage to pay your school fees, mm -hmm. that's it. So you have to, you know, you have to go through a lot. And then I had friends who were from better background. And, you know, I saw all those things. I liked to be like them. Mm -hmm. So I decided to, and I felt but like, okay, easier, my friends. There are easier ways to make money, right? Okay. You know that? I know. Right? <laughs> Tell us about that. There are easier ways where young I, girls I make money. Girl. Girl. No, you wanted to use a path where you work your money. Tell us more. Exactly. Okay. We see it out here with these youths. Um, a lot of them, they get so... Their inspiration comes from the media. Mm -hmm. Flashy things. Yeah. And they feel like you just wake up out of the blues and... You have all these things mm -hmm. at your yeah. mm -hmm. exactly at your young age. 
you know, you don't even picture, okay, look, at my mom has been working for this number of years to be able to achieve this. My dad did this, maybe my others, and, and me, all of a sudden, I just want to have everything, everything at the time. Like, the media is misleading them. Mm. There are a lot of there are a lot of startups. There are a lot of initiatives that young girls can put up that will earn them their own money. Mm -hmm. They rely, they lean on maybe whosoever. Mm -hmm. But as a young girl growing up, with the way the society is becoming, girl, you need to work. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, what are the obstacles for young girls to have their own startups? Mm -hmm. the, and I think the first obstacle is lack of self belief, lack of self esteem. You know identity because um believing in yourself, believing in yourself yeah. you start that's, from that's the first obstacle. Yeah. Another obstacle is myths about women and money. That's mm. the first thing. Because most the average woman feels that uh, to have money the, the only source of income is a man. Mm -hmm. I'm not in any way saying this to yeah, that's what um, that's it. That's but it. you have men who have distracted you along your path? Oh um, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have nothing against men. Men are amazing people. I love them. I have amazing brothers, amazing fathers, amazing okay. women in my life. So okay, go ahead. Nothing close to that. I'm just saying that um most women have there are a lot of myths surrounding women and money. Women feel that to have money you need to be in a relationship okay. or you need to depend on somebody and to have somebody. money. Mm -hmm. But yeah. I believe that we all are blessed with inherent gifts and talents. And mm -hmm. if we dig into those talents, we can refine them into skills mm -hmm. and be able to bless ourselves and also bless people around us financially. That's mm -hmm. what I believe. Which means that a lot of young girls are out there, they, don't, they have not yet identified their talents. Exactly. exactly. Mm -hmm. Are we talking the same? Yes. Yes. Am I saying just, yes, they, they don't know what to do. They are just basically, that I can even say that they are mentally disturbed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because... <laughs> Mm -hmm. Because they don't know how to to create a girl, she can be there. She will say that no, I cannot sell tomatoes. I cannot do that. I'm so proud. I'm, she's so proud of her. Mm -hmm. Whereas if she just has a capital, she can invest and have something else after. Can you deprive yourself of certain things just to set your goals? Yes, of course. Like as you asked a question earlier, mm -hmm. right? Like um, what made me not to use the easier way? Mm -hmm. You know. While growing up, I like po I used to like politics a lot, and I still like politics, and I have political ambitions. Wow. So um, those are some of the reasons that I could not really do, you know, do any kind of thing, because I know that it's Preserve going to actually haunt me tomorrow when I want to get into politics. Mm -hmm. So I think. Just that so you have alone. To preserve yourself. Yes. I mean, just towards something, towards <laughs> an yes. objective. Yeah. You have an objective. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's a goal for me, and um, that's why I cannot, you know, I cannot get off the track mm -hmm. because of that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, what are some of the challenges for young girls, especially startups? Start they have your project. There are obstacles. Some will even put the obstacles even before beginning, right? Procrastination. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have people who procrastinate mm -hmm. alone. Mm -hmm. You will have somebody who will talk you into, why not do this? I see so much potential. I will do it tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I have them. Mm -hmm. uh, Your friends, right? Oh, yeah, my, <laughs> my babies, as I call them. <laughs> okay. You will try to lure them into seeing reasons why you need to be on your own. Forget about what your parents are giving you. Mm -hmm. Be unique in your genre. Like when you talk to them and they will tell you, Auntie, sister, tomorrow I've heard. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow I will start. Tomorrow you will never start. Mm -hmm. And you keep on procrastinating, pushing it forward. Mm -hmm. So I feel like with the, 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 the ones I've discussed with so far, that is the main challenge I have seen with them. Mm -hmm. With them. Because I don't procrastinate. So what challenges, what, what strategy do you put in place to change mindsets? To pull the young girl towards having her own project Having her own project, she just needs to, like what um, my sister, my co said, mm -hmm. you just need to sit down and think deep within you. Mm -hmm. Bring out that potential in you. We all have this inmate potential in us, inborn. Mm -hmm. So when you sit down, you need a push factor. Let yourself be talked into bringing out that skill you have. Mm -hmm. Don't give a deaf ear to what people are telling you. Exactly. When somebody sees you and tells you you have a potential deep within you, mm -hmm. you should try to figure out what that potential is. Nobody will do it for you. Mm -hmm. We just need to tell you that, hey, I see this in you. 
you will be a great person. They have told you. So what are you doing? You need to work on yourself. Mm -hmm. Work on yourself, on your mentality. Your mentality shouldn't be uh, people will give you. Mm -hmm. Maybe you are from a good background, they give you, people will give you. In order to, you have to emancipate yourself, bring out your potential, and you, only you can do it. No other person can so do it. So what is your push factor? My push factor? Of course. Um, I can say my push factor is, first, I start with my parents. Mm -hmm. My parents. You got your motivation from them? Exactly. You're inspired by what they do? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Especially my mom. They didn't just, we had, but they didn't give you. Like, you have to sit down and think of something to do. Yeah. They didn't show you that. Life is a bed of roses. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. We had. But they made you to think about life in a different perspective. Mm -hmm. You should not see life so easy because who knows what the future holds. Exactly. Now, I would like us to watch uh, this report on what some female entrepreneurs are doing around uh, Cameron, some of their projects. Let's watch. We'll be right back after the jingle. Many call her Pamela the Painter. A name she earns after embracing a job many claim is meant for men. She has had to distinguish herself and is a master of the arts of printing. The young lady tells me she got in the job against her parents' will, but again she has been roaming around without a job after graduating from school. The beginning was tough, she tells me. The fear factor and lack of confidence in herself almost pulled her back. She quickly regains her self-esteem and heart to embrace the job. At the beginning, I saw myself in the midst of men. It was not easy to adapt, but again, it was advantageous for me since I was protected by my colleagues. Pamela tells me she had challenges which sometimes demoralized her and she felt like quitting, like quitting. Imagine me carrying buckets of pins all the states and down, I go back home tired, very tired. I feel like abandoning by the birds I regained my post the next day. Her boss describes her as hardworking and devoted towards her job. She works well, she's focused, she's that learning type and open to criticism. She has learned a lot within the short time. She has ambitions and projects herself as an entrepreneur in 10 years to come. Pamela has ambitions and projects herself as an entrepreneur in 10 years to come. In 10 years' time, I see myself as a CEO with my own decor company where I could continue with my art of painting too. Just like Pamela, a lot of women continue to break stereotypes and barriers and create an environment where they excel in their businesses and careers. Munie de sa combinaison orange et de ses outils de travail, Fidel Kenny débute sa nouvelle journée de travail. Âgée de 33 ans, elle est mécanicienne depuis une quinzaine d'années, ici au camp Yabassi, à Douala. Mariée et mère de quatre enfants, Fidel Kenny a appris ce métier de son époux. Formé, quand j'ai été tombée enceinte de mon premier fils, il était à la maison, il m'a dit qu'il ne peut plus rester à la maison. Donc quand il faisait là, ça me plaisait. De temps en temps, il venait lui rendre visite, ça me plaisait. Après, il dit, bon, comment je fais la vie Il ne faut pas la maison, il ne faut pas lui suivre, travailler. Quand, suivi, quand je l'ai suivi, il travaillait, je voyais. Ça n'a pas causé de problème. Toute ma famille m'aime comme ça. Ce que j'aime, ma famille doit aimer. Pour Samuel et Kété, son mari, c'est une fierté d'exercer le même métier que sa femme. Elle était très, très brave. Bon, tu sais que c'est les étapes de la, la vie. C'est les enfants qui nous ont quand même soutenus pour continuer même en réunion. Tu vois que bon, il y a que fraîcheur n'a pas de sens. Comme ça, quand tu travailles avec la femme, c'est important. Fidel Kenny est assez populaire dans son secteur. Les clients satisfaits de son travail n'hésitent pas à revenir pour bénéficier de ses services. 
Chaque fois que je viens ici, elle est une femme battante, elle travaille bien même. Je l'encourage parce que c'est une femme qui ne se laisse pas. Il faut qu'elle continue davantage à faire ce métier-là parce qu'il n'y a pas un sous-métier. Donc tout travail là, lorsque tu fais bien, ça va donner. Vu les difficultés, avec ça, on se débrouille et on se bat, vraiment. Je peux vous dire vraiment très, très satisfait. Pourquoi Parce qu'elle s'en donne vraiment dans son travail. Comme dans tous les domaines, Fidel rencontre des difficultés, mais elle sait y faire face. Depuis qu'elle a commencé à travailler, les difficultés, ça va les clients. Il y a les clients qui arrivent, parfois ils me grondent, parfois quand je suis, ils me voient comme je suis une femme, ils me parlent n'importe comment. Mais je ne me laisse pas faire. Il y a parfois un bagage même ici. Même mon mari, lui, quand il est là, ce n'est pas facile avec les clients. C'est moi qui calme les clients. La mécanique fait partie des habitudes de la famille du couple équité. D'ailleurs, les enfants prennent souvent la relève quand les parents ne sont pas disponibles. Now, there is this burning a question. Do you think most young girls today are dependable? They don't like want to stress up to do anything? So much dependable on parents? Yeah. Is that your mind? Um, and most young girls, yes, the average, the average young girl is, uh, is dependent. She has a dependent mindset. And mm -hmm. this, this, um, this goes back to, to uh, even an African tradition, the way the way women were perceived in the past, like women are, are, are commodities, that's, that's the perception people had about women. Women are just supposed liability. to... Liability. Uh, a liability. Just, mm -hmm. just stay there and when you're of age, you lay up to marriage. So exactly. I think that even with the, the recent um, education about women empowerment and even the education about who God really created women to be, that, um, that mindset is still ingrained in women. Even women who are empowered, who are educated, there's still that iota of, okay, I, there's still that iota of dependence in them. Mm -hmm. So um, I think that to, to be able to overcome these women have to be awakened to their identity. Mm -hmm. Because I, um, the dominion was given not only to male, but it was given to male and female. Mm -hmm. So they have to awaken to their identity that you're not, you're not a liability, you're not here to depend on somebody, you're not here to just sit and... Um, and have children. Not saying that having children is not is bad. It's very beautiful. It's very amazing because we need to bear children to be able to uh, multiply. Yeah, I know some keep asking you going to school. What do you want to do? do. You need to marry. You need to get exactly. married. Some even get choice. betrothed. Some yeah. Yeah. like you don't even have the choice yeah. as choose. a woman, mm -hmm. which is very deferable. So, what has been your biggest challenge so far? So far, my biggest challenge: lack of. Um, trustworthy teammates. Yes, I started the business on my own, and I believe that the people I had to work with, the people I had by my side, did not understand my vision, did not understand my goal. Did you sell your vision to them before? I did, I did, but then since they didn't see it like the way I see it, they didn't deem it necessary to abide in what I am telling them to and that's do. that's seriously affecting the business, right? It affected it, but I'm trying to work out on it because I've seen some very positive people that are ready to sell through with me. All right. So that has been my greatest challenge. Nicole? Aside from finances. <laughs> Nicole? Yeah. Your challenge? Mm. I feel like one point in I your think business like, felt like walking away, giving up at one point in time. I think she stole my notes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, yeah, um, it's always been about, um, you know, having the competent team, mm -hmm. like people who can actually, um, you can actually trust and depend on. Because, you know, you cannot do everything alone. Mm -hmm. As a leader, even, you just have to motivate your workers to, I mean, to help you, to assist you through your, your vision or through your, your path. Now, I always have issues with, with them because sometimes they don't understand like she said sometimes no matter how much you try to explain. to explain the dream to them try to really um, sell the vision to them right there are some of them who won't really get it but at the end of the day I think that you just I mean you just have to keep trying you just have to keep 
taking yeah. off some people, mm -hmm. you know, bringing in new people, trying to still continue selling the vision, and I think you're going to get there. Now, let's talk about funding. Yeah. How much did you start with? I started with less than 100,000. Mm -hmm. I started with like 80,000 francs, and my elder brother gave me. <laughs> All right. Now, <laughs> how much did you start with? Zero francs. I just started with my idea. You started with your idea? Uh, yes. And when you put and idea this is what I did. Okay. I started with my idea. I went to the market. I just went to the market, got the prices of stuff, and I made good use of my phone. Mm -hmm. I was snapping, I'll enter in your shop, I'll permit I'll ask you please, can you permit me just to take this picture of this beautiful fabric, all this beautiful design, all this beautiful beat. And when I post on my stages, I'm like, people are interested. I will tell you, okay, this is the amount. I will take your money, go to the market, buy, get my own commission, and that's how oh, I started my business. Mm -hmm. Okay. That is it. You don't need to have um, this high amount to start up a business right. you just need yeah. to be focused because and goal driven the young yeah. girls who are limited like mm. i need like they need to wake up i need to i need some amount of money before i can start up something for myself no, no. girlfriend no <laughs> girl <laughs> you don't need it you don't need it, it. you just need to be focused okay. and goal driven <laughs> honestly confidence yeah. yes all right nicole i think some of them is Confid because as she said earlier it's because of the glamour lifestyle that they see on social, social media, media. Mm -hmm. and they also they, they just they believe these days that um business is all about branding yeah yeah mm -hmm. they have this their branding, branding idea. Their terms. yes they need to have a good phone in order to take good pictures mm -hmm. to post yeah actually some may really need that need amount that. because there are some people like people do drop shipping if your image is not clear right you will not be able to sell that product mm -hmm. so sometimes i think that having the capital too is important depending on your business like the kind of business you want, you to, want do. to do for example if she wants to do spa there are some people that don't believe that she's doing spa now maybe her sister started by just having this small thing that you put your legs inside and you just wash your legs maybe she started gathering the money there or maybe she went to the market put eyelashes for one thousand or do nails for one thousand put the money together and now she's having a whole company just like i started i was doing hairdressing before i'm now a hair production company okay. yes yeah, so i believe in starting little exactly. mm -hmm. so you can always you know you can always get a lot of inspiration and you have that skin in the game when you start little yes. you understand but so many people i mean they just want to start in the stage where every other person is there and it bounces back to social media and that's yes. why i always advise all young girls there's a way you use social media Okay. Not to get to um, be productive. To, yes, to get you productive, you need, right? You need to. You have a phone. You just want to for, prove. Yes, you right. have to forget about every flashy thing you see on yes. social media and exactly. be real. And that's be real right. to yourself. Be yeah. real to your background. Yeah. Be real to who you really are. Who you are called upon to Where be. You are exactly. From. All right. And that's why these days, please let me let me say right. something before I forget. Right. This is why these days, right? This is how I maybe can help somebody out there. This is okay. how I use social media. Even when I just got into social media i was never following all these glamour people mm. on social media when i go on social media i knew what i wanted to be in life i follow politicians i follow entrepreneurs and i follow um, um tech people because i like technology and i'm actually um i'm actually studying um tech right now like i'm doing programming right now so this is what i do Social media to me is like a, a medium of learning. learning. It's like exactly. a, it's like a school for me, okay. especially me who is a school dropout because I dropped out of uh, out of school. After um, high school, I didn't continue. Mm -hmm. After Pan Africa, I, I never graduated from Pan Africa. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so because I you use it. You, you continue with your business. Yes, because when I started the business, I also asked well, her that, mm -hmm. how did she, like, how is she doing it? But at least right now you've gone back and you're trying to follow up your programs. Right? No, I've not gone back to school, okay. but I mean I'm self learning. I choose what I want to learn, and I go, I, I go learn, okay. learn the stuff because I don't believe in schooling. I believe in education. Okay. So the most important thing is for me to have it and to have the focus. I don't believe in school. All right, we're you're talking about the social media. Thing. Yeah, I was talking about social media, right? Um, this is how I use social media, that it can help other people. I follow the things that I'm more interested in. Like when I can stay 30 minutes straight on my phone, but trust me, before I leave, I'm at least... I've at least known so many things that are going to help me. Yes. You understand? Yeah, so that's how I use social media. Even if you follow me, I, I will not follow you back, not because I don't like you, but I'm because I feel like you're not, I'm not interested in the things that you're going to post. Yes. You understand? From time to time, I can come and Google, check your name, and then I like your pictures. But I will not follow you because I want my timeline to be full of people who motivate me. Relevance. Yes, okay. that's what I do. You're talking about 
the, how the social Confident. media can influence the young girl, especially female entrepreneurs, those who have that zeal to get into business, but they get into social media and they get through the wrong path. Yes, what I would add is that young girls usually just take uh, social media to prove they are not they are not conscious. They'll just take it as to for fun, to snap, to to show that she went to a restaurant. She has, she has, she has. You're supposed to use it as a learning tool. Yeah. Yes. Get there. Get what you want. Get what is going to impact your life. Mm -hmm. That's that's you follow people who can impact your life. Exactly. I'm not going there to just pick. That will even yeah. encourage junk. you to do something good for yeah. your future. Yeah. yeah. All right, now, who is your role model? Um, who is my role model? This is a very difficult question <laughs> to, to answer because um, I have role models in different um, facets, but my number one role model is my mom. Mm -hmm. I admire my mom so much because um, she made me understand the importance of motherhood, the importance of being a woman, the importance of being a wife, because more so because in this age and time when we're talking women entrepreneurship, women in leadership, women empowerment, the... The, the trap is that women feel like, okay, to, in order to be a woman or in order to be a, a, a leader, and I can only be a leader out of my home but not in my home. Mm -hmm. my, mom, um, my mom was a, she's, she's retired, she was a teacher, and I believe that I'm, we are able to be who we are today because of the investments that she made in her life, in yes. her lives, uh, her presence in her lives, her education, her empowerment, her, no, her nourishing. And her warmth, because you go home, you, you go to school, you come back, you, you, you receive a very big hug. It, just, just that warmness is able to nurture a child to become whom the child is, is so supposed to be. So you look at be. your mother, you inspire to I'm be inspired more. to to be more. And it, the, 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 inspirement, the, the inspiration also comes from the fact that way back I used to get angry and I'm like, okay, why did you not go further in your career? Because you were trained in, um, you were trained in catering and... And other businesses, why do you not go find this? I used to be angry at some point, but the, now, right now, I have inspiration You've to understand. You've understood that. a lot about life. I understood about the life. Is, about is life. that yeah. to understand that <laughs> having a good family you does set not. Set your goals and you end up not having, having them. Exactly. And also, the fact that having a good family does not limit you from excelling in your business, or from, does not limit you from excelling in your career. Yeah. So, my mom is a role model to know that I can have. A beautiful family, and I can be, I can excel in my career, and I can excel in my business. All right, let's talk about these fascinators again. Now, how much did you start with? How much did I start with fascinators? Fascinators, um, specifically the fascinators. I started with how much was that? Day? Can I have some? It was less than five thousand francs. To like, start off with the fascinators. Yes, so that the, the materials I got for my sister's wedding. You started with five thousand francs to produce a fascinator. A fascinator, is that That's the material you use. That's the materials in, I in producing a fascinator. a fascinator. And then when you produce one. You when produced I, I another. Produce another people like from her, they, they, they ordered, and that's why I like. So you started with five. Let me say your capital was five thousand. Five thousand francs. Mm -hmm. Um, and also. And five thousand francs produced what? It produced a fascinator. It was worth um, ten thousand francs, fifteen thousand francs. And later on, you continued. I you continued continue. the fifteen thousand or what you earned from the first fascinator. From the first mm -hmm. fascinator, I reinvested, and mm -hmm. um, I want to say that my capital was also my natural environment because mm -hmm. my mom. She has a machine at home, so things like the, the scissors, the glue, the tape, I don't have to buy all those things, they're already in the house. It also goes back to the fact that <coughs> I feel like the business you, you can start with is something that is Around inherent, yeah. it's yeah. something that is inborn. You, probably you may, want to, you may want to do a restaurant or you want to have a, a maybe a hair company or something, but it's something that you have inborn that you don't need so much capital to start with. Yeah. Maybe your voice, you can you can MC at an, at an event. Mm -hmm. You don't need to have money to MC. You just need to wear a good dress and MC. Okay. You make yourself telling young girls how to look at, re-examine exactly. yeah. exactly. yeah. 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 Look yeah. at those yeah. things you can in you. do. Yeah. What are you dreaming about? Look at the mirror, look at yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Ask yourself questions. What are those projects I want to do? Don't try to do what you cannot mm -hmm. do. Yeah. But their projects are bigger than you. Yeah. Exactly. You start with little steps as you are saying. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> now, <laughs> now, what yes. you talk about? You talk. You said zero capital for you. Yes. But you started. That with is how, how much? I started. Actually, I will say because yes, actually, I st yes, I actually started with. That's when I came when I moved here to Douala, I started with eighty thousand. But, but but I told you guys earlier that I was in Boya when I started with nothing because okay. I was braiding because that's what actually led to this to what I am now. Okay. I used to just do braiding on campus and then I used to move and do mobile hairdressing. All right, eighty thousand francs and today how much? The capital of Kampus. <laughs> Approximately. 
I'm sure we're going to right now. It's capital because you have, you're employing. Yeah. You have um, how many people you're employing today? Um, more having, than, yeah, more than more 50 we're yeah. trying to restructure. With, for all my businesses, yeah. For all your businesses. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, now, and you have a role model? You have someone you're looking up to? Okay. Have, when you're so down there, you try and look at that person and it makes you have focus on track. Yeah. Uh, my role model in business is Madame Kate Foto. Mm -hmm. She's also my godmother in business. Okay. Yeah. She also came from nothing. Like she told me her, a short story about herself the last time I visited her and she told me these same things. That's, this is how she started. I've attended conferences where she, she talked about her mm -hmm. story and I really got inspired and that's who I look up to in business. All right, the program is uh, Women and uh, Leadership, and today we focus on young female entrepreneurs. So we'll be right back after the jingle. Now, I want us to be practical, real right. practical. What are the steps? We have young girls that are looking up to you. They want to start up a business, they want to just start from somewhere. What are the practical steps to take? Yeah. Um, the idea, nurture an idea. Mm -hmm. Like what we've been saying. We've nurture been an idea, how? How? How do you go about Search it? Search yourself. Okay. You know these potentials, like what um, she has been saying. All right. You have this in you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Try to figure that out. Mm -hmm. If you're unable to figure that out, you always want to start with something different. All right. So, mm -hmm. so, so, when you nurture the right idea, try to look at. People that have, you know, Don't done need. the same thing like you, read, make use of your phone. Okay. Maybe you, you see like, okay, I'm passionate. Let me just say, what if I start, I used to love this. Who are those doing this on the media? Mm -hmm. All right. Look at how they are doing it. Mm -hmm. Three. Start putting it into practice. Like, go to the market. Explore the market. Mm -hmm. Go to the market. You know, ask surprises. Try to inculcate knowledge of what you want to do in yourself. All right, move from you to <laughs> tell us what was the first um, step. The first thing is uh, build your skill. Okay. Mm -hmm. Grow. Mm -hmm. And don't be afraid to start. When you, if you learn something today, practice it. Don't be afraid to start. Just keep on practicing, practicing, and always ask for feedback. Number five. Number five. <laughs> <laughs> like number five. <laughs> Somebody here for some All right, number five. <laughs> I think number five is going to be you actually identifying your market, mm -hmm. the, 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 yeah. the, your customer, true, true. who you want to sell yeah, to, and then you actually try to get product market fits because that's what's very important. But that's follow up. Yes. yes. Follow -up. You need to do what you do on the ground. Yeah. On the ground, okay, follow research. up, try to yeah. do have feedback. Mm -hmm. yes. Your product asks people, you can create a Facebook page, a yeah. YouTube page. And we're already on number five and you don't even need a capital. capital yes. Right? Yeah. You know, that's and the then, funniest part. And then number six, number when, six. when does the capital thing come in? Um, I think that the capital comes in when you're expansion. When you're expansion, when you're expand, when you're expand, expansion, when you're like you, you want to expand, then you may need more capital. Let me tell you, to maybe how you can start. Okay. You can start. If you're doing fascinators, try to. You know, make friends with people doing fascinators. Mm -hmm. okay. Post them on your status, make use of your social media handles. Yes. When you post them and you have clients, you have customers, you, you will now build up your own customer base. Right. How you do that? When you post, and okay, the person needs it, the person is interested. Next thing is, hey, please, can I have a fascinator? I have somebody that wants it. Wants, the, price you, the price you will tell the person, I'm sure you have a 2,000 friends, you have a 3,000 friends. Okay. That's it. You just do the game. You just play along. And before you know it, you're already having money to buy materials to start building up your own stuff. All right. Another obstacle is at the level of the bank. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? It's so difficult to get. Yes. Oh, no, on. On. Nicole, do you have an idea? Mm, very, How very difficult. difficult. <laughs> it's very, very difficult because, you know, banks always I work with small. collateral. You enter the bank, you look at me, you ask for me. <laughs> like, hey. money for, what yeah, you need this money? Sure. I call the police. I said, there's a little girl here. She's asking for too much. <laughs> yes, Nicole? Yeah, okay. Now, um, <laughs> it's kind of difficult because with banks, right, they mostly work with collateral. Yeah. Yeah, but there's this way that you can always um, work with credit unions micro like me I, I i mostly work with microfinance mm -hmm. and when i work with them it's easier because i do my daily weekly and monthly savings there mm -hmm. sometimes when you just look at your saving your your records right mm -hmm. they easily trust you and give you a loan and they are the people that actually have the heart to help um i'm a, I'm a, I'm a startup entrepreneurs yeah so i always deal with you know with microfinance than 
the, banks. the banks. All right. Yeah. Shikina, now we're in 2023. What are the projects you have in mind already? Um, they talk about getting into clothing to add to your... Now, what are you dreaming of? When you look at young girls around you, what do you, what do you want to do? My dream is to be a business manager. Mm -hmm. I want to have my You're own. already a manager? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. I want to, to expand to more about it. You want yes. to expand yes. your business? Expand. You want to wider manage scope. more yes. people? Is that have a wider about? scope yes. of I'm trying to management. Help you, right? mm -hmm. so, you see, you can talk. Yes, I, I want to have a companies everywhere about clothing, about fashion, because I'm just, I like it. But okay. if you want people to know about you, right, it means you need to put in more effort, right? Yes. You can't just sit in your parlor mm -hmm. and the company just no. popping up, mm -hmm. right? Yes, it's true. Um, <coughs> to make more friendship with people, I think... Um, can help you. Can yes. help you. I build. think that, that, yes, I'll build something I'll, as my... I, as my clothing, mm -hmm. I'll be wearing clothing it. And people, yes, and when people will see me with it, they'll be interested. There's a lot of that's innovations. Branding. That's yeah, branding. That's branding. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now I'm going to zoom my phone. Now, one of those things I want to do in 2023, especially around the young girl, oh. because people are looking at you right now. I know you have your business in front of you. You want to probably expand. Now, what are those things I want to go extra, the unusual? What do you want to do? What are those things that are itching in you <laughs> that you want it to come out? Um, like I said before, the facilitators to me is just a tool to reach out to young girls because mm -hmm. personally, my heart is really out for the young girls. Mm -hmm. And I, like I told you backstage, I went out, initially I went to learn facilitators, they really told me 300,000 francs. Mm -hmm. And as we're talking about funding and funding and funding, sometimes um, some people might not have the time to, or may not have the, the tools to be able to dig within them to find the gifts with them. So mm -hmm. one of the projects I currently have is to have a, it's a master class, fascinating training master class okay. on the 7th and on the 8th of April in Boya. And in this master class, mm -hmm. we're not just teaching fascinators, we're also going to be talking about money myths and also t educating them how, do they, how can you start your business, how can you run your business. I'm also going to be having you know, educational talks because I believe that it's not just enough to have a business, but you need to have you need to have you need to be intellectually sound to run a business. You need to be mentally sound to run a business because the business is, is, is just it's, it's a thing. But what, what's more important is you as a person. How developed are you as a woman? Can you do you really, do you really know yourself? Can you really speak about yourself? Behind the closet, who are you? So besides the fascinator okay. training, we're going to be having um, we're going to be having trainings on who the woman is, what is really a woman, what does it mean to be a woman. That's going to be in Boya, right? It's going Boya. to be in Boya, yes. Is it for free? It's not going to be for free. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, but it's going to be an, an affordable price, 35,000 francs. Okay. I believe that That's letting the whole for... trade. Mm -hmm. Letting the whole trade yes. for, yeah, for one, one How many days? Two days. Two days. Two days. Two days. Two days. Two days. Where you're living, that two days training, you already know how to you do. Know how to it's, do it's already a business. And mm -hmm. your mind yeah. develops. Because okay. I, I put at this price because I, I estimate that a student can save up 85,000 francs in three months or in mm -hmm. two months, I can be able to afford this and have and have what it can take you to run for a lifetime. Yeah. All right, and Nicole, I want you to look at the camera right in front of you. Yeah. You're speaking to the young girls out there who don't have any project, want to start something, they don't even know how to go about it. Mm -hmm. Talk to them in just a minute. Tell them what to do. Okay. Tell them your mind. Tell them how to start up. Okay. Something. Um, I think some of you watching me you already know my story. Like when I came in here, I gave you guys a little, you know, summary. about my summary about my story. Now, I think that what you need to do is to actually have a calm head. Yeah. Because a lot of people are going through a lot. A lot of you are going through a lot. And you're not focused to actually put together what you want to do. And it's not quite easy because even me, it took me some time to find myself. It's very difficult. It's very hard. But just sit and... Try to think. You have phones. Try to think about what you think you can do with your life and start doing it. It might be schooling. We're not here because I'm, I'm a school, school dropout. I will not tell you that you need to drop out of school in order to make money or in order to become a successful person in life. No. If it's schooling, you go back to school. If you want to do business, take your phone. You can Google anything. You can go on YouTube, try to learn something that you think you can, you can, you can be passionate about. And then there's something I would like to also tell you guys. You must not do something that you're passionate exactly. about. 
Passion is just a word. True. I was about to come to that. If you've never played football before, you don't know that football is your passion, right? Mm -hmm. So you, you should always try new things, and you should never marry your ideas. Mm -hmm. Some of you are makeup artists. Right now, makeup is not really, uh, maybe the market for it is saturated. You want to just stick to it because you Explore. think it's the you only thing you can dynamic. do. You don't marry your ideas. Try to always pivot. Leave your ideas to die and go to the next idea. Yes. Always try. You have all the time. And I will say that this is the right time for us to do all of that because we are still very young. This is the only time that people will open doors for you. If we were all 50 years old, we will not be here. She will not call us. <laughs> She's giving us this opportunity because we are young and she wants us to grow. So take out your time and start something. Fatima, I know you all get married, right? Mm -hmm. You're not in the projects and you're not saying no because, I mean, you're doing it and you're waiting for the right man to come your way. And no to distraction, right? No to distraction. No. But now, <laughs> now, tell the young girl out there in just a few seconds what you want her to hear and what, what do you want to change. Hey, the young mindset. girls. Well, we have said everything here, and I believed you, have, you must have picked something. So what I would just want to tell you is that please be focused. There is a lot out here to explore. Make good use of your phone make good use of YouTube, learn more skills. Like I said, I am into designing and accessories, but I do surprise packages. So it means that I'm trying to be dynamic, even being passionate. So young girls, please be proactive. Try to learn new skills. Forget about every distraction you see on the media. Be focused. Don't be a liability to the society at large. <laughs> All right, Shikina, look at the camera that we. This is your camera in front of you. Say your word. What I can say to young girls is that they have to be concentrated. They have to be focused on what they are doing now. They should not just be running, seeing what their friends are doing because we are not everyone. We don't have the same background. Mm -hmm. So we have to be focused on the future that today I'm doing this, I'm enjoying life, but tomorrow, what will be my life? Will, will my parents still be there? Will my friends still be there? We, we have to really think about it. We have to really think about it and know that life is not just there to... We have yeah, to be focused. Right. All right, thank you so much. And we have... Uh, we have... Uh, Manzo. Manzo. And what I'm putting, the fascination I'm having right here... Yeah. She actually did it herself, and we have more beautiful fascinators you have right here. I'm sure if I put it on again, it's going to be wow on my everything. <laughs> but I want you to tell your last words to young girls out there, those watching you right now. What do you want to tell them? I'm sure I want a lot of girls to change. We have want more girls to have projects in 2023. Um, if there's anything I can say to a young girl is that I want to remind them that they are beautiful. I want to remind you that you are limitless, your potentials are endless, and just um, what I want to say is that go within you, believe in what God has placed in you, ask people what, what do you think I'm good at, and when you have feedback from those people, invest in those things. And I want to say that learn all you can whilst you can. Be flexible. If you, if you meet people doing something, just be curious, ask questions. You never know what a particular skill can, you never know where a skill can, can learn you into. Okay. And if you are in school, and that in this age, we have the, the slogan, school has come. If you are in school, trust me, put your all to it. Even in as much as I do fascinators, I'm also a student, and I'm very passionate about my school. If you see me in school, you don't believe that I do anything other thing besides school. So if you're a student, put in your all to it. Be excellent at what you do. Be good at what you do. Be passionate about what you do. Not, don't do what you're passionate about, but put your passion to everything that you're doing and I believe in you and I believe that the hope of this nation belongs to you so arise and shine because your light has come mm. all right thank you so much ladies for answering to my invitation right now I have a beautiful fascinator <laughs> being produced by a manzo I'm sure you want to do the same like how you just need to start with little steps and you're going to succeed we're talking about women and leadership, and we focus today on young and female entrepreneurs. They are doing wonderfully well. Thank you are there searching your mind, search those skills, and do the same thing. Take the same path. I'm sure you got the tips. The program was Women and Leadership on Canal Day International. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.